Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can take a $20 item or a $10 item and add value to the same concept. So I hope you enjoy this video. Today we are going to be making a knot sculpture. Okay everyone, so just like in my video where I did the knot sculpture, I'm going to first start by tying this knot. Now the purpose of this video is to take and showcase what can be done with a fairly simple, fairly simple project. Now you can make this however you would enjoy making it or decide that you would like to make it. But the point of the exercise is to show you how you can take something that was originally a $10 keychain and take the same concept and turn it into something that's worth a whole lot more, like a $50 sculpture. And it doesn't necessarily have to take any more time to do so. So the first part in our process, we bend our little U-shape here. This is a lot heavier rod than what I used in the keychain. The keychain example, I used 3 8 inch round material. This is half inch round, and that's what we're going to tie this uh, little knot out of. Okay, now that we've got our U bit built, bent here, we're going to take that U a little further around. We want this to tighten up. So this long straight section will become the part that we're going to end up poking back through this loop in a second. Now we don't want to tighten this loop too much. You want to plot, allow enough for this to tuck through. Now I did this little knot sculpture in another video, so I'm not going to go over every little intricacy on how to tie the knot, but it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a really great, great way of practicing your hammer control and where to hit and move the metal. Now we're going to heat this piece right up in here and we are going to wrap it around and thread it through the hole on the hardy hole and tuck it. And then we'll go with a rawhide mallet, tighten everything up, and then we'll move on to the actual base that's going to turn this into a nautical sculpture. Okay, now we're going to make this bend using the Pritchell hole. Just to start the bend, we don't want to go too far because we don't want to leave any marks on there. Okay, and now we're going to get intentional about our smithing. There's the knot. And this is where it's going to get technical. We don't want to leave a bunch of hammer blows on this. so. This is where I'll switch with, and yes, the rawhide mallet finally gave up the ghost. Let's have a moment of silence and mourning for Roy's rawhide mallet. It will be missed. Okay, after crying a little, back to it. So. Just tuck that right through there. And hopefully everybody knows I'm joking, but I mean, I just figured I'd point that out there just in case I, my dry humor isn't fully conceived and realized. But there we go. We're just going to keep tightening that up and just keep working at tightening up the knot using different angles, different approaches. to get what you're needing to achieve. Remember, you can't touch this with your hand, so you have to find ways of manipulating the material to where you want it to go by having places for it to go and places for it to resist going. Now you would think this would be abundantly apparent, but not always is it that simple. So you just have to keep working this until you get the knot all closed up. Now you can leave it a loose knot, 
if you don't want to put in the time at the anvil to hammer it closed, but a loose knot will be very telling, as if you tighten up the knot, it will be a lot more difficult for people to tell where it's come from or, you know, how did you do that? It looks more impressive if it's a tight knot. So I'll get this all tightened up and then we'll work on the base. Okay, everyone. So here we go. This piece is going to be for the base. I got the knot tied and it's cooling down. We're going to be using a piece of half inch thick, two inches wide by three and a half inch long, flat bar mild steel stock. And like in my texturing base video, we're just going to go ahead and texture this thing all up. This is just a piece of scrap that was laying around. We're going to take and beat this out here on the edges and uh, give it some like a decorative border. And then we will drill it and attach the knot to it. Okie dokie, first things first. We need to take care of some of these weird cut lines that are on this thing. So we're going to stand our base up on end and really just dress these out. This is going to upset the piece a little bit, but that's okay. Whenever I have a lot of forging to do, I will use my three pound hammer. If I'm trying to do a lot of material, overcome a big mass of material like this is. As you can see, that three pounder does a pretty good job. You don't need no six pound hammer to do this. Or eight pounder. And it's a lot more controllable. Okay, now we brought some of this back into square. We dressed up those edges. We will take another heat and we're going to start our chamfering. Just like you see here. Now, this would move a lot easier if I have it nice and hot. But we're going to start this chamfer. So, let me get it hot, be right back with you. Okie doke. Got it getting hot again. We'll work on the other end. Work efficiently. Just give it some good strong hammer blows. And then we're gonna work on the sides. We're just trying to produce the same facet meat on the corners. Once again, this is supposed to be a decorative base, so you can leave this really heavily textured. You can forge it square if you want to. Where everything's squared back up, you can leave it kind of dog boned like it's doing there. Whatever floats your boat. There we go. Man, that's looking good. And I should state, this piece is thick enough that my hammer is staying completely on the piece. I am not hitting the anvil with the face of the hammer. If you're running into a risk of that, try to go all the way to the far edge. That, just giving her a little plainish there. Nothing too exciting. A little around the top. Plainish that in. Some more in that area. Voila, like so. As you can tell, this is cold, so I'm not really hitting this thing. I'm just touching it up. Voila! There you go. That's the base.
get this in focus. There you go. You guys can see that now. Very simple but attractive base. So go ahead and drill a hole and we'll get over and get it welded up and finished. Okie doke everyone. Here we are. We are all finished up. Now, obviously you can treat this the same. You can use some of my other techniques I have taught about finishing, highlighting edges. You can brass brush it. You can oil finish it. You can paint it. You can polish it. You can do whatever you want for a finish that way and really make this your own. You can tie all sorts of different knots and creations. But this, this little simple square knot is a great way of taking, once again, the same process, the same simple techniques, and creating something of more value than a simple leaf keychain. Now you can see in this video demonstration how you can take something that would have been $10 because of its intended purpose, just to hang on somebody's hip, and add just one more element to it, and now this becomes sculpture, which is, which is worth more. Now this becomes a mantelpiece thing. It can become a ceremonial thing for weddings. You could include a phrase like, we tied the knot. Go ahead and feel free to use that one. You make customization to it, put stamping, wedding dates, names, you name it. Things like that. And you can offer another great product on your site using the same thing from tying a knot for a keychain that's only worth $10 and turn this into a $75 item. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, you may want to take and hit the subscribe button and the little jingly bell if you like this kind of content and you want to take and see more. Like I always say, thank you all for watching. God bless you, and we will catch you on the next one.